Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, and I've just picked up new Pokemon Snap. It's kind of a first thought, it's kind of not. Um, I have played the original Pokemon Snap, and my housemate already picked up this game when it came out about a week ago, and I've played it a little bit since then, so I already have a pretty good idea of what to expect, but uh, this is me starting, you know, my own copy of the game, basically. <laughs> but yeah, um... If you're not familiar with Pokemon Snap, the original game was on the Nintendo 64, uh, and it was, uh, basically it's like a rail shooter almost, um, you have a camera and you're going along, like, a track that, and you're automatically moving through an area and you take pictures of Pokemon as you go, so it's a rail shooter without the violence, you're, sh you're shooting with a camera instead of a gun. <laughs> And yeah, it, it's it's got a lot of cute Pokemon to take pictures of, and they haven't made one of these in a long time, because the last one was on the N64, as I just mentioned. And given the nature of the game, honestly, just making it again on a modern platform with, you know, better visuals and stuff would actually improve the game a lot, even if they change nothing else. And it actually looks like they have changed some stuff, so we're going to dive in and we're going to have some fun. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Gonna uh, boot it up. I think this corner is the best spot for my face, but I might need to move around. We'll see. This game saves automatically. Please don't turn off the power when the autosave icon is shown. Uh, you can't change languages later. Okay, English. Uh, you can change voice languages later, which is interesting. You can't change text language, but you can change voice. And you can't change your appearance. It's very weirdly limited. <laughs> uh, I think probably this one. Um, your character's appearance doesn't really matter in this game because, like I said, it's like a rail shooter. You're in first person most of the time during gameplay. Um, but you do get to see yourself, so that's why it's a lot more limited than, for example, Pokemon Swoosh. Uh, please enter a nickname for yourself. You can change your name later. So I'm not sure why you can change your name later, but not your appearance. That's a very strange limitation. Uh, if you think about, for example, um, Animal Crossing, uh, in that game you can change your appearance as much as you like, whenever you like, but you cannot change your name later. I'm not sure why it's the other way around here, instead of just, yeah, you can change everything about yourself whenever you want. Uh, like in Dragon Quest Builders 2, for example, which lets you change your name and your appearance to the greatest to any extent you want, whenever you want, essentially. Um, it's, it's just weird. Um, I suppose, like, like I, like I just said, like, appearance does not matter that much in this game, uh, because of the nature of a game you play mostly in first person, but it's still weird and it would be better if it didn't work that way. Uh, also, you can see I have a cursor here. I don't know what the point of that is. If you use the D-pad, it'll just jump you directly to the things you can actually click on, but it gives you a cursor you can move around with the left stick. For some reason. Anyway. Like, there's, there's no reason to have that. It's like, did they think you are going to be playing with a mouse? You can't play with a mouse. The game doesn't work that way. It's weird. <laughs> Let's just dive in. Okay. Yeah, I think probably the main draw of the game here of Lens, the Laboratory of Ecology, Ecology and Natural Sciences, is how absolutely gorgeous it is. Look at this. New Pokemon Snap. Oh, oh, I like my stockings. Or socks, or whatever they are. Oh, look at all the cute little Pokemon! Oh, I look so happy! I wish I could give myself glasses, but... Um, again, it's mostly first person. Oh, a voice. Um, oh, it's Frida. Hey, over here. Greetings. I think they're voicing themselves. I shouldn't talk over it. Okay, now they're not voicing themselves. Either. I'm glad you made it. Welcome to the Laboratory of Ecology and Natural Sciences, or LENS for short. Get it? Part of a camera. My name is Mira. Get it? Part of a camera. I'm researching Pokémon and their natural environment here on Florio Island. Yeah, so... yeah, and that's not all. The professor's gonna study every single island here in the Lentil region. 
No one's ever done an ecological survey like this before. It's going to be amazing. No one? Aren't you forgetting a certain explorer? Oops, good point. You've read the stories of Captain Vince, haven't you? But even counting him, Professor, your survey is going to be the first of its kind in a hundred years. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, thanks. <laughs> this is Rita. Her parents are good friends of mine. She's here on vacation while her school's on break. Jeez. I'm not just here to goof off, Professor. I'm your research assistant. Also, my name isn't the part a part of a camera, so I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> I don't know, like, Rita, like, research? I, I don't know what they were going for. <laughs> Ah yes, that's right. I appreciate the help. Anyway. Now, before we go over what you'll be doing in this program, uh, why don't we step into the lab to get settled? Yeah. Right you are, Professor. I'll lead the way. Kinda wish I could make my design a bit more wild like Rita here with her purple hair. Alright, allow me to explain. Arduino in the background. Look at that Arduino. Oh, adorable. The lentil region is absolutely teeming with Pokémon. Photographing these Pokémon helps us learn more about them and their ecosystem. And that's exactly what you're here to do. By the way. At night you might even get to see glowing Pokémon. They're really pretty. All right. Now, without further ado, here's your research camera. <laughs> I've got the same one! We can use them to communicate with each other and the rest of the team too. So, so these research cameras, are they phones? Uh, did you just give me a smartphone? Is that what happened? <laughs> That's right, it's more than just a camera. Let you keep in touch and analyze data on the fly. Yep. It'll also serve as a sort of ID badge for you here, so take good care of it. <gasps> My new camera! How did that lens fit inside that camera? It's so tiny. <laughs> it's thin, there's no room for that lens. Awesome, right? The professor invented it. Can I explain how to use it, professor? Sure thing, Rita. Sist away. I'll go take care of some other preparations. Alright, come on, let's go outside. I haven't really done anything, any gameplay yet. Here we are. Tutorials are based on default button layouts. I'm using a pro controller. So it'd be a little bit different, but roughly the same. Try getting a shot of that Pokemon. You can press the A button to take a photo. Yes, great going. I can't move around yet. I was trying to and it won't let me. Now why don't you try moving the camera to line up your shot? See that circle in the center of your viewfinder? That's called the pointer. If you use the left stick to move the pointer around, the camera will move to follow it. Give it a try. You can point the camera up and down, and even spin all the way around left or right. Pretty straightforward, really. Controls to aim your camera too. That's not turned on at the moment. Oh, look! Here comes Pikachu! Hi, Pikachu! Try getting a shot of that Pikachu! First, move the pointer so it's lined up with Pikachu. Did you see that shape appear around Pikachu just now? Yeah, that little box thingy. Zooming? No way. To zoom in, just hold the CL button. You'll stay zoomed in until you let go. Try snapping a photo of Pikachu looking nice and big. Reed is pretty cute. <laughs> Hi Pikachu. It won't let me move the camera around, like I can only do the button on buttons it's telling me to do during the tutorial. Thanks, Rita. Oh, great! You can adjust your camera and motion controls from the settings menu. You can also adjust them from the pause menu while you're out doing research. Hey, Professor! Cover the basics! I don't remember if you can zoom in the original 
uh, N64 game. How was that? Hope you're getting the hang of your research camera. Now then, I'll evaluate the photos you took. Would you mind choosing one shot of each Pokémon you photographed? I'll rate them using my special scoring system. Pick whichever shots you think are the best. So this is very much the same as the first game. Um, it grouped the photos like by Pokémon like this, and you got to pick one of each, and then it would give you points by selecting the Pikachu folder. Boop. You can choose a photo with left, right, or by moving the pointer. Press A when you decided which one to show me. Uh, this one's clearly better. Still kind of fuzzy though. Next, try selecting the Vivalon folder. I've only got the one. Press plus or select Show Professor when you're ready for me to evaluate your shots. How do I make my glasses do that? That was so cool. Starting with photo number one. A new discovery. Oh, it's Pikachu. This is the first time you've gotten it as your subject. First thing I do is rate each photo from one to four stars. I come up with a system to help us understand and categorize how Pokemon behave. Photos of Pokemon in an ordinary state get fewer stars. More unusual behavior means more stars. Uh, basically, you want to get them to do things, and then you take a picture while they're doing something, and like, that's worth more stars. Um, things like eating or interacting with other Pokemon. Uh, it it's different for each one, but you'll see. Simple enough, right? To be clear, the number of stars a photo receives doesn't affect its score. Every category is important. By the way, the camera keeps logs of what was happening when you took each photo. That data helps me categorize your photos. Let's move on to the scoring. Let's evaluate the subject's pose. Snapping a photo at just the right moment is key to getting a high pose score. Now on to the other factors. Size is straightforward. The larger your subject Pokemon appears in the photo, the better. Then there's the direction the Pokemon is facing. Try to get it facing you in your photos. Next is placement. Try to get the Pokemon in the center of the frame for a nice balanced photo. And finally, you get bonus points if other Pokemon are in the photo with your subject Pokemon. Now, I know that was a lot of info all at once. Let me boil it down. Remember this and you'll do fine. Get the Pokemon nice and big in the center of the frame, then snap that shutter. All that in mind, here's your evaluation. So one of the like highest things for ranking here is size. If you get them real big in the middle of the frame, like you just get way more points. <laughs> Looking good. Hard to believe you're a beginner. I mean, I only got a bronze star, but all right. <laughs> Next is Vivalon, a new addition to our research. Nice work. See, it's in flight. Nice going, this isn't a bad shot at all. Remember, getting the whole Pokemon in the frame looking nice and big is key to a good size score. How was it? What did you think? Once you get your photos evaluated, you can use them to fill out your very own Pokemon photo decks. That would be a great milestone to work towards. That about does it. I think it's time you set off on your adventure. Let's go. Now then. That should be that should be, blah, 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 blah. that should about do it. See this pod? It'll carry you on your photography expeditions. By the way. It's called the Neo One. Yeah, um, I forget what the one in the first game was called, but it was very similar to this. You just, you were in this like little transport vessel that carried you through each area. Uh, I think it was on like a physical track in the first game. In this one, it's like a hover vehicle. So it's easier to go like underwater and through the sky and stuff like that. <laughs> the best, it can teleport to far off places in no time flat. Here's the thing. I finally put the finishing touches on it not long ago with a little help from someone I know. You see, it makes use of energy hotspots scattered throughout the lentil region. Jeez. Come on, Professor. The details can wait. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Let's get you moving. Climb on in and touch your camera to the console. Cutscene time. Yeah, this looks safe.
The Neo one automatically sets the route so you can focus on controlling your camera. Aim the camera or pointer, move right stick or left stick. Zoom, press and hold L or ZL, take a photo with A. Yeah, I think this is the best corner to put my face in. Based on the things that are happening on screen. You can tell who's talking because you can hear their voice. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you can see in, in the top right corner my remaining photos show up. Uh, in the bottom left it shows the photo I just took and like the actions I have available are in the bottom right. So top left is probably the best corner to use. And yeah, uh, you can sort of get an idea of how the game works just from this already. Uh, motion controls are still off, by the way. They seem to be off by default. That's Rita saying that. <laughs> uh, it looks like I'm saying everything, but I'm not. Oh, what are those? There's not much point taking pictures of things that aren't Pokemon most of the time. Uh, it'll just show up as no subject at the end, and Professor Mirror will not give you any points. Ah, flying squirrel! Or a flying squirrel, but they were too fast for me. We will get more options as we go. You can see I'm only using the A button right now. Uh, we will get things on B and Y and X as well, we just haven't got them yet. <sighs> but yeah, you can see... If you, you like seeing cute Pokemon doing things in nature, this is definitely a game for you. It's kind of like a game of a nature documentary. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's more or less the same game as the original N64 version, but everything looks prettier and there are a lot more Pokemon now than there were. Um, it's also a lot easier to share your photos. Um, we'll get to that in a bit, but you know, because the Switch has online features and stuff that the N64 didn't, it's much easier to do that kind of thing. Uh, there's like a social mode where you can share photos with your friends who play the game, that kind of thing. Uh... I'm probably not getting very good photos just yet. We're quite limited in what we can do. Um, as I mentioned, like the other buttons are going to fill in with things we can use to interact with the Pokémon. Uh, and once we can interact with them a bit more, we should be able to get better pictures. Uh, we're nearing the end of this course, it's quite short. Uh, by the way, if you run out of photos, it's like for in memory, like it says 30 now, if it's if it gets down to zero... Or you'll teleport back to camp. Uh, yeah, if you run out of photos, like, you are allowed to continue on your first visit to a certain course, but after that it will just make you exit. The reason for that is that you get to see what the whole course is on your first try, uh, even if you run out of photos, otherwise there's not much point going if you don't have any film left. Um, and yeah, in the first game they had like a gate, uh, with like glowing light in it. Instead there's like a little marker on, in this in this game. Welcome back. I hope you had a good time in Florio Nature Park. Now, just like before, it's time to show me some photos you took. Go ahead and choose one photo for per Pokemon. No. Have a little drink here. Uh, let me see, we're looking for a good Vivalon photo here. I reckon this one's probably the best. Uh, you can compare it to the one you have saved by pressing X like this, just to swap them over. Uh, yeah, that one looks good. You don't have to pick a photo for every Pokemon, but I'm going to. Uh, probably this first. Maybe this third one. Try this one. 
Bidoof? Uh, that one looks best. Uh, the little exclamation mark means that your photo decks doesn't have a photo for that section yet. Uh, so whatever you put is going to be like the best one you've ever taken because you haven't taken one yet. So it's a good idea to pick one at least. There we go. Wimple. Uh, first one's probably best. These are not great photos, but I don't have a whole lot to work with just yet. I think that one on top of the sign was probably the best one. Or maybe this one? Hmm. Let's try that one. Okay, we've selected one of each. Go the professor. All right, nice work. <laughs> yeah, you can say that's much better than before. <laughs> and you get to pick which one to keep. I don't think it really matters. Like, you can keep the bad one and it'll still give you the points for the good one. If you want. Um, but usually you want to get a better photo into your photo deck so you keep it. No, the size is good, so that should be a decent score. Oh, look, diamond. That's the best rank you can get. Oh. That's a pretty good shot of a bit of. Nice work. Oh, diamond again. Hey, Forgers. This one's probably not so good because they were kind of far away. Gold? Huh. They're not facing the camera, so we'll probably get a penalty for that. Nice work. Mm, silver, not bad. Halo. That one looks pretty good. Nice work. Skip gold. You can skip this ahead this 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 ahead faster if you want. I'm just taking it a little slow so you can sort of see what's happening. Oh, gold spawner. Nice. That one's probably not great. Yeah, bronze. And comfy. Uh, maybe that's good. You can kind of say comfy or comfy. I don't know. Well, it was gold. That's cool. How was it? So, what did you think? Anyway. One last thing. Let me tell you about research levels. Your research level in a course tells you how much progress you've made there. Once that level goes up, you may see Pokemon behave in ways you haven't seen before. So, um, basically each of the courses in this game has a different, like, variation and you can switch between them at will when you start the course, you unlock them as you play the lower levels. Um, so there's a lot more replay value to each course than there was in the first game, which did not have this feature. Um, like the layout, like the layout you actually go through is the same, but the Pokémon will be different, there'll be more of them in different types and they will be doing different things, so. Yeah, that's cool. The key to raising your research level is to observe all types of Pokémon's behaviours. That means getting photographs of them in every category from 1 to 4, 1 star to 4 star. So in short, fill up that photo deck, keep that in mind, you'll be on the right track. So get out there and snap lots of photos and cherish the encounters with Pokémon you have along the way. Great work researching this new site, I hope your next trip goes just as well. We got a present! A research title, Photo Program Newbie. As big as possible. <laughs> 2,000 points or more in the size during your evaluation. Yep. Mac dab in the middle. Cool. Um, I'm going to pick save photos to album just to demonstrate this feature. I didn't really get anything super good, but I want to show what you can do. After your research trips, you can choose photos to save to your album, which is in your space in the lab. You can also choose resnap to make some changes to photos before you save them. So, this resnap feature I don't know how this possibly works, uh, but you can go into a photo you've already taken. You can choose resnap, and it lets you like move the move around uh, the angle and stuff in 3D of the photograph you took. <laughs> also, zoom in a bit more if you want. There we go. Hello. Yeah, it's, I don't know how this is possible, but it's a thing. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> and yeah, and you can mess with the focus and adjust stuff like that. 
uh, then you can save the photos to your album, and then once they're in the album, you can share them with your friends and things like that. Uh, let me see, what else was good? Yeah, none of these are super great. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of options to make my photos better yet. Uh, it automatically captions the photos, as you can see, nice and calm. What, where's it going? In flight. Uh, you can change those captions when you save the photo, make it say whatever you want. Pretty common behavior. Where's it going? Where's it going? <laughs> Two. <laughs> where's it going? <laughs> that's just question marks because that's like not a Pokemon. Um. Uh, so yeah. Uh, once you go return to camp, you do lose the ability to reshoot, so you probably want to save things before you do that. Return to camp. You can capture 72 photos per research expedition. Unless it's your first time on a course, your expedition will end when your photo memory reaches zero. Be sure to keep an eye on it. That covers just about everything. Can we go on a nighttime photo shoot later? Not yet, but soon. After a little more practice. Also. By the way, don't think you can come back to the lab and take a look at your photo decks anytime. <laughs> I'll explain more about that when you stop by the lab. Anyway. Well, don't let me keep you any longer. Go have a good time and snap some photos. Okay, so we've got a bit of a main menu here. I'm kind of covering this corner, but that, that says research. <laughs> and it's got like a, a picture of the little a little picture of the Neo one. Uh, then we have the lab, then we have our settings. I'm gonna turn on motion controls. You can change various settings to customize your gameplay experience. You can even change some of them during your research trips. Check the pause menu to see what they are. Um The reason is this is sort of, you know, like a first person shooter kind of game. And I found that uh, motion controls in Splatoon were really helpful. So I'm gonna switch that on. Uh leave that the way it is. Uh, you can mess with, like, the movement speed of your camera and stuff if you want. Uh, there's a bunch of different options here. You can uh, toggle some of the buttons around. Uh, you can't do complete, like, custom remapping, but you don't really need to because the Switch can do that anyway, but... Uh, you can mess with the volume and stuff. Let's head on out to the nature park to take some photos. Yeah, let's, let's have another go. So big research here, it'll give you... Oh, another cutscene. Are you headed out on another expedition already? Before you go, let me tell you one more thing you can do with your research camera. You can run a scan. That'll give you details about your surroundings. It tells you about nearby Pokémon and points out anything unusual. Professor, what counts as unusual? You've never given me a solid answer. Basically anything that makes the system go, check this out. Yeah. Well, I guess that's all the detail we're gonna get. <laughs> You'll get the hang of it once you try it. Rita, would you mind demonstrating? Yeah. Leave it to me, Professor. Alright, get that camera ready. Off we go. Tutorials. Dude. <sighs> Professor. 
Hey, Professor, explanation's all done. Thank you. Thanks, Rita. Don't hesitate to run a scan, it'll tell you a lot about your surroundings. Okay, so we've now unlocked scanning, um, which is a nice feature to have. And now we can actually go and do some more research. Uh, so this is the, like, map of areas we can visit. As you can see, there's just one. Uh, there will be more. <laughs> it's gonna expand quite a bit. Up, 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 up. Uh, let's head back in and have another look around. We already saw this information, thank you. There's a wumple and a floor just in the silhouette. Here we go! The yeah, motion control is on now, as you can see. I'm not sure why the um, Mars and Venus symbols are relevant in this game, like, there's no Pokemon breeding or any- Oh! I got it, I got it, I got a Molga. Just. Oh, there it goes. Those aren't- first photos aren't as good, but I got it. Oh, what's there? Oh, it's the fruit. I think I want to up the sensitivity when you turn and stuff. It's a little bit slow. A crystal bloom. Hello. Kind of far away there, Magic Up. So, um, like they said, when you push the point into the edge like this, you can turn. You can also just turn by using the other stick. If you would prefer. What's going on over there? You guarding something? Oh, something to look at. Over here. Yeah, I want to turn up the sensitivity a bit. It's a little slow. Hoot Hoot. Oh, Hoot Hoot's up there. Hello. We get a better picture at night when Hoot Hoot's awake, but yeah. Where are we going? This way? Okay. <laughs> At the teleport point. Hey, Florges. I only have the scan option at the moment, so I can't really do a whole lot to get their attention. Right. But yeah, we will get more options uh, on the Y and B buttons here. <laughs> it's time. Where to put question marks in your sentence there, Professor Mirror? Uh, let me see. Okay, we got a two star one apparently. Uh, let's filter to two star photos and see what's best. 
Uh, I think probably this one? Okay, I got some shots with the Emolga. This one's probably the, the best one. Not great though. A bit of a better picture of Taylor. Uh, maybe that one? A bit dark, but it's a lot closer. Okay, we got a picture of Bidoof's butt. <laughs> got a real bad picture of Hoot Hoot there. Uh, probably that one. Okay. Not bad, silver. Emolga. A new discovery. Nice work. Eh, bronze, yeah. Nice work. Oh, yeah, that is a little bit better. Mm, great timing. Oh, diamond. That one's pretty far away, so it's pretty not very good. Nice work. Yeah. Nice work. Probably worse than the other one, but it's funny. Yeah, it's a little bit worse. Hello, Hoot Hoot. A new discovery. This is the only one we've got, so it'll give us our... Perfect timing. Oh! Diamond, really? Alright. Nice. This is probably a worse picture of Florges. Yeah. And Vivalon. Yeah, we'll keep this one. Cool. Experience? Level 2? Level 2! Look at that, you've hit a new stage in your research. Keep an eye out for changes, no matter how small. By the way, thanks to that progress you've made in your research, I've got something to report. I'll fill you in once your photos are squared away. I think you'll be pleased to hear this. Um, do I want to save any of these? Nice and calm. Again, I think my photos aren't super good yet. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll improve. <laughs> we can't retry yet, which is interesting. I guess we'll unlock that as we progress. We already know about photo memory space. Thank you. Your photography seems to be going well. I think you're about ready for a nighttime visit to Florio Nature Park. Hopefully you'll get to see one of Lentil's greatest wonders, a glow called the Illumina Phenomenon. Of... <laughs> you're the one who discovered how that glow happens, right, Professor? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am, but explaining the process scientifically was just one step toward my ultimate goal. Finding the special Pokémon spoken of in the Legends of Lentil. You mean the Illumina Pokémon? I thought they were made up. No. No, they're very much real. You've seen the photos from Captain Vince's travelogue, haven't you? That's just blurry. You can barely tell what's in those photos, and they're ancient anyway, literally a hundred years old. All right now. Well, we can discuss that later. Right. For now, enjoy your nighttime outing. Let's go do some stuff at night. So now if we go to research again... Uh, we still have just the one level. No. Uh, but we can select Park Night if we wish. And it has separate research levels, as you can see. Uh, and here we can swap this around if we want to do it at different levels. I think the route is probably the same. Oop. Oh, whoops. I just wanted to see what it did, but it's taken us in. I didn't mean to do that. 
Uh, we, we probably want to go to night time so we can unlock some new stuff is the thing. Uh, quit research. Oh yeah, it's still... Is this a bit odd actually? If you quit, it still goes through this step even if you didn't take any photos. Oh, he's so grumpy. <laughs> Wait a second, you didn't take any photos out there, did you? goes to this step, or you can pick what photos to show me that there aren't any. <laughs> oh. And I get no points, yeah. I can't wait to see what photos you bring back next time. A bit passive-aggressive. Return to the research cramp. Okay, uh, let's go back in and we'll go at night now. I think day and night versions of the same tracks is also new in this game. I don't think the first one did that. Again, though, I haven't played it in a long time. Uh... Okay, let's go do it at night. So yeah, um, you can play this at either level if you want to redo the first level or if you want to just play it normally. Or you can go to this one. So we're visiting the same park, but it is night time, we may have a bit of a different route. A region that has many islands and its own unique culture. The island's environments differ drastically, and flowers and Pokémon in the region have been observed glowing. We want to keep an eye out for glowing things, because if we get a picture of them, that might help us out. <gasps> Skull Bunny! Skull Bunny! Skull Bunny! Skull Bunny! Skull Bunny! <laughs> Skull Bunny is in this game. Game of the year. Yeah, I'm gonna just turn up the sensitivity a little bit. Uh, as you can see, the default is very low. If we up that to... Let's just double it and see how we go. Yeah, that feels better. See you there, Score Bunny. Yes, I got you. <laughs> oh gosh. Game of the year. <laughs> hey, a Tangrowth. Okay, we've got plenty of pics of Tangrowth. Caterpie. Hello, Caterpie. Oh, you're so little. Oh. Uh, I forget what you're called. Honchcrow or something? Murkrow. Oh, something we need to scan? If, uh, here? Oh, hello. A natural bump in the ground? Oh, a pincer's down there. I can't really get a good photo of it because it's buried in the ground, but I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> oh, Torterra! Hi, Torterra! So many cute Pokemon. Oh! One of your glowing! Illumina phenomenon. Pidgeot! Hello Pidgeot! Look over here! <laughs> Go score bunny! <laughs> Oh, that's adorable. Oh, hello Hoot Hoot. You're awake now because it's night time. I'm probably gonna run out of photos, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh gosh. Pinsa, hello. Oh, hey, another hoot hoot. <laughs> oh gosh. So, yeah, I think you're probably getting the general idea of Pokemon Snap at this point. Um. Oh, Combi, hello, Combi. <gasps> Skull Bunny's back. Hi, Skull Bunny. What's the game want me, to, want me to do? It says there's a scannable, but I don't see anything. Over there? 
Oh, there we go. Oh, another cl the crystal bloom. Okay. Oh, sleepy score bunny. Look. Off we go! Oh gosh. I took so many pictures of Scott Bunny. <laughs> <sighs> We've got a lot to discuss, but first let's get your photos evaluated. <sighs> Look at them all. Okay, let's start with the two star photos. Um... It's a little bit obscured, but that's probably the best one. Probably that one of Bufalant. And Gross, I took a few of you. That one of Pinsa. And yeah, I can show the press of the Crystal Bloom as well because it was glowing. Uh, probably that one. I got a picture of Pidgeot. Score bunny! Uh, I like score bunny. <laughs> nice <gasps> Diamonds. What a lovely score bunny. This one's probably not as good. Nice work. Oh, gold. That's not bad. And growth? Oh, diamond. Okay. Caterpie. Oh, look at that little Caterpie. Silver. Not a bad start. Combi, this one won't be as good. It's kind of far away, but... Silver. Could be worse. Hey, Pinsir. This one's probably pretty good. It fills most of the frame. Yeah, diamond. There you go. For Terra. A new discovery. Great timing. I like the implication that the professor has never heard of any of these Pokemon. Because when you see a new one, he's like, a new discovery every time. Yeah, that one's not a great photo, but they are Illumina Phenomenon-ing. Nice oh, wow, that one's really good. Cool. About these Murkrows. A new discovery. Nice work. Gold, not bad. Nice work. That's got to be a much better hoot hoot, right? Yeah, way better. <laughs> Crystal Bloom. They don't give you points for these, I believe. This is a Floria Island Crystal Bloom. That glow is what we call the Illuminate Phenomenon. We're just getting started with this after hours research. Good luck out there. I know you can do it. A present! Look this way. A thousand points more in the direction category. Nice. Also, I got a profile icon for going there at night. And a Crystal Bloom icon because I found a Florio, Florio Island Crystal Bloom. By the way, 
Thanks to the progress you've made in your research, I've got something to report. I'll fill you in once your photos are squared away. I think you'll be pleased to hear this. Let's just jump in and have a look at my photos. <laughs> look at all these score bunnies. I took so many score bunnies. <laughs> Oh, look at this leafy little score bunny. <laughs> oh, I love them. I'm just gonna, gonna grab that one. <laughs> wow. Something incredible has happened. <gasps> Here, take a look at this. Here's the thing. When you got near that field of flowers, I picked up an incredibly strong energy reading. Also, its source seemed to be moving too, if only slightly, which suggests what we've got here is. An Illumina Pokemon? We can't be sure yet, but I suspect so. I wonder why it showed up. Did you do anything special? I also doubt that it appeared when it did by chance. So I think you should be the one to investigate the area where that reading is coming from. What? Oh, I want to go see too. You can watch through the monitor with me, Rita. Right. Please head out as soon as you're ready. Okay. Okay, as you can see, we have regular park options. We also have an Illuminous spot. Uh, having played the game, like, you know, with my housemate already, I know what this is. Illuminous spots are essentially boss battles in a photography game. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <sighs> Captain Vince, an adventurer who explored the islands in the Lentil region around 100 years ago. I was reading that. <laughs> Definitely where the reading was coming from. Do you see or hear anything? A foot? Oh, it's so pretty. Mm -hmm. Hello, little friend. The Illumina Pokemon. Quick, get its picture. You only need to get like one decent photo of, of an Illumina Pokemon during one of these Illumina Spot challenges. But, I'm gonna take a bunch anyway. Oh right, you can see those markings just lit up when it talked to the flower. You need those markings to be visible in your photograph. That's basically the rules of how this works. Also, I like the music for Illumina Spots, it's pretty good. Going this way now. Meganium, you're so pretty.
Also, yes, we've just started the game. We've already found this legendary type of Pokemon no one's ever seen before, except this one guy that no one believes. <laughs> already. <laughs> Coming up in about an hour, so hopefully I'll basically finish the first world. We've got a lot to discuss, but first, let's get your photos evaluated. So, there's only one Pokémon, so I just pick one photo, basically. Um, you can see it won't let me use these ones that aren't showing the Illumina Phenomenon. Uh, so we need to look for the ones that are, and we need to look for, like, the best one of those, basically. I think probably one of, like, this one is probably the best one. You can see the whole Pokemon. All right. A new discovery. I've never heard of Meganium before. Heck yeah. Whoa, level up. Look at that, you've hit a new stage in your research. Keep an eye out for changes, no matter how small. Woohoo! 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 By the way, now that we've got that Illumina Pokémon info, I've got something to report. I'll fill you in once your photos are squared away. I think you'll be pleased to hear this. Uh, let's just return to camp and see what it is. You're back! Yes, you're back! That was amazing, right? Wasn't it gorgeous? Wasn't it huge? And was it... Saying something? Rita. Easy there, Rita. Take a deep breath. Look who's talking! You are practically dancing, Professor! Ahem, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. There's no doubt about it, that Meganium was an Illumina Pokémon, just like in the Legends. Remind me what the Legends say about Illumina Pokémon again, Professor? Didn't they supposedly save Lentor from a huge disaster a long time ago or something? Mm -hmm. So the story goes, yes. Illumina Pokémon were also said to have distinctive patterns and to glow with unusual light. Sounds like our new friend! Yes, to the letter. I'm convinced the events in those legends really did happen, and discovering the true history of this region could be the key that opens up all our research. Hang on, wasn't there one more important thing you were going to mention, Professor? That's alright, it's pretty late. Let's pick up the conversation from here tomorrow. Tomorrow? Like... Like, the next scene tomorrow, or...? Yes. <laughs> morning. Good morning. Did you manage to get some sleep? Now, as Rita already told you, Here's the thing. I've been preparing to launch an ecological survey spanning the entire Lentil region, and no sooner had you arrived than we suddenly found an Illumina Pokémon. Huh? You think there's a connection, Professor? I can't be sure yet. But fascinating things are bound to happen if you come with us. Really? Really? <laughs> well, you know, maybe. For <laughs> a scientist, you sure can be vague sometimes, Professor. <laughs> Still, I think it's a good idea. It'll be way more fun with you along. Oh, thanks, Rita. Well, there you have it. Ready to officially join our, invest our research team? Can I say no? Are they going to promise me? No, I'm not going to say yes. Excellent. All right. Well then, let's make it official. With a team badge. <gasps> a team badge? <gasps> so happy. <laughs> it's like you were born to wear it. All right. Well, what are we waiting for? Adventure awaits. Not to run in your parade, Rita. 
But I need to get a couple more things ready first. Ah, oh, come on. Just a little bit longer, all right? I promise it'll be worth the wait. I'll explain next time you're headed out to do some research. They are. Let's have a look. <gasps> a present? You got a sticker. Team badge. Team badge. Let's go out and do some research to see what he wants to say. All right. Now that you're a full-fledged team member, I have something for you that'll come in handy. As for the explanation, would you do the honors, Rita? Yeah. Yes, sir. But is it just me, or have you been getting me to do a lot more of the work lately, Professor? Hmm. Oh well, time to explain like the great assistant I am. So this, is... this is a fluff fruit. They grow here in the lentil region. As they're sweet and tasty, and they make a great snack for Pokémon. They may look just like regular apples, but they're way lighter and softer. <laughs> You'll probably make a Pokémon's day if you toss at one of these. Right. Let's get you some practice. So, um, in the original game, uh, Pokemon Snap on the N64, you actually did throw apples. Uh, I think they've changed it so that you can't be as quite as mean to them by throwing crap at them. <laughs> uh, by making the fluff fruits lighter and softer. Um, but they're clearly still apples. Tutorial time. So yeah, we have a new option now. Also, in the N64 game, the, the apples were like sprites instead of actual 3D models. It was pretty cute. Thank you, Rita. Right? Pretty easy, right? I think that should be all you need to know. So I guess now we just wait until the professor gives us the green light to move on. Oh, I've got an idea! You should try testing out Flufffruit and taking some more photos in the meantime. The professor says there are all kinds of ways to use it. Finished explaining, I see. Thanks, Rita. I've got one more thing to tell you about 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 for now. I thought it would be handy to have a quick way to share what we see and learn in the field. Are you too familiar with Lentalk? It rings a bell, I think. Yep. It's a communication tool folks here in Lentalk use. Rita, let's say you notice something exciting in the field. You can send a photo and a description over Lentalk. I can use it to send things I notice on the monitor too. That sounds super fun! Look for Lentalk messages in the top right of the screen at the research camp and elsewhere. They ought to help. And we got this new option up here now. Uh, I... Yeah, uh, I believe I'm seeing... Uh, yeah, you can see, like, the globe symbol here. These are, like, other people online who have posted their photos. <laughs> I love it. Give you a sweet medal. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's the social aspect of the game. Essentially, you can have a look at your friends' photos and stuff that way. I think it will actually show other people, like other friends who've played the game, if I go to the right spot, but I'm not sure where. This is the professor's lab. Not that it's your first time here, of course. Uh, this is where the professor does his research and works on mechanical stuff. In fact, he pretty much lives here. Right. Anyway, let me give you a quick rundown of what you can do here. Me. That server over there is where we store our research work. Now, there are a few things you can do without all that data. First, you can check your photo decks. Uh, that's the encyclopedic record you're building with the photos you're taking. 
Isn't it cool getting to put together your very own photo decks? Next, there's a your sp there's your space. Uh, that's where you can see your personal photo album and adventure milestones. Your album is for photos you want to keep, but not put in your photo decks. You can edit your album photos in some cool ways too. Hmm, am I forgetting anything? Hey Professor, was there anything else I was supposed to mention? Did you cover what we can do on the internet? Oh yeah, that was it! If you use the online internet feature, you can see photos from players all around the world. If you really like a photo, you can tell the photographer a nice job by giving the photo a little digital medal. They're called sweet medals. Give all you want, people love getting them. That's right, you can also see other photographers' rankings in each score category. Alright, I think that's everything. I'm sure you'll figure it all out quick. Don't be so shy, try everything out. Okay, so... That's my photo decks, that's my space, there's the internet. Please avoid posting inappropriate content so that everyone can enjoy this feature. Inappropriate content can be reported and subsequently removed. Please refrain from making false reports. Come here to view photos and rankings from players all over the world. You can customise how you appear online or on your page, so please check there if you're curious. Uh, the reason I can't see a lot of this stuff is it's actually set to hide levels I haven't gotten to yet. Uh, I think you can switch that off, but I'm going to leave it that way. The player's photos... Can I see my friend's photos? Like, there should be an option for that, right? Oh. Yeah, these are kind of like achievements, I think. Having a quick look at the options available to us. <gasps> Photo decks, Danielle. Oh, I can like zoom in and have a quick, a closer look at the area. Ooh, cool. And, yeah, I can zoom right in and have a real close look. Like, I can get an idea of what's on the route that I've seen before. I like that. And I can go look at the photos I've taken of Pokemon. Meganium? You don't see this every day. Oh no, I thought that was Mars. It's something else. <laughs> Taking it easy? Hey, what's this? Oh, I see. Ah, the two genders. <laughs> ah, the two genders. No gender difference and no gender difference. <laughs> Where's it going? I, I think you get like a description uh, in this question mark section once you've filled in all four or something like that. It's gonna take a while though. Okay. So yeah, um, this is new Pokemon Snap. Basically, if you like seeing Pokemon doing cute things, play this game. Because <laughs> it's just, it's a game about, like, seeing Pokemon and making them do cute things, and that's the whole game. Do, 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 do. Oh, there's me. Can I stop, tell it to show my friends? It did say it. It did say I could do that. But uh, friends. Yeah, it's working. 
Oh, look, Lyra's and Silva. That's the housemate um, I've mentioned a few times that I've been playing the game with. Apparently she's doing pretty well. In eight days. <laughs> Did that show a friend code? I'm not sure. No, it didn't. Okay. Just making sure. Okay. I guess I'll unlock these as I go. I'm surprised there isn't a just see the photos your friends have been posting option. That seems like a really obvious thing. Um, I could be just be looking in the wrong place though. Or alternately, they might just show up here. Let me see. Mm, doesn't look like it though. Eh, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, so that's new Pokemon Snap. Um, you unlock some more stuff that I haven't got yet. Uh, this game does not have the festival, the first one did. They kind of merged that in with the fluff fruit. Uh, you do get an Illumina uh, orb, uh, which you can throw at stuff to make it do the Illumina phenomenon, and that gets you some more points. Um, there's also uh, like a. Uh, you can play a musical track thing. That was in the first game too. It was the Poke Flute, but I think it's called something different in this game, but it's still here. Um. And eventually you get like a fast forward button as well, which is also similar to the first game. So, yeah. Essentially it's, like, it's got more replay value in the first game because there's multiple research levels and you're trying to find, like, different types of photos of each Pokémon and, uh, there's different versions of each course at different times of day, that kind of thing. Um, but otherwise it's more or less the same game, just prettier. And because of the nature of this kind of game, just kind of making a new version that's prettier is enough to make it worth getting, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, if you, you know, if you loved the original, definitely play this. If you've never played the original and you want to play a game where you get to see Pokemon being cute, play this. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's super adorable. And it's not, like, it, it can be a little frustrating trying to get exactly the right photos to get points and stuff, but you aren't really punished for getting, like, a worse photo. It doesn't, like, there's no, like, health or anything. You don't, uh, you don't get, uh, dinged for a miss like you would in a normal rail shooter, for example. You don't take damage. Uh, so, it's a very relaxed sort of game for the most part, and, uh, it's just sort of nice to chill with and watch the Pokémon being silly. And that's kind of, yeah, the whole game, just Pokémon being cute and you taking pictures of them. Um, I might just go into my album here and just show off some of the editing features just to get you, give you an idea of what's available. Uh, I'm more or less done with the video at this point though. Yeah, if you go photo editing, uh, you have like filters, you unlock more of these as you go I believe, but yeah, you can uh, do a bunch of different effects to the photo. Get brighter. Uh, make it look ca cartoonier. Split into little pieces. There you go. So yeah, you've got you know basic photo manipulation features. You've got stickers, which are pretty cool. Uh, these are fun. Uh, let me see. There we go. <laughs> oh, and here we go, here we go. So you can have some fun, make some silly photos. Uh, frames are here as well, just, you know, basic sorts of stuff. I think you unlock more of these as you play as well. And yeah, you can just make your photos back here. And you can change the caption.
You can use a real keyboard, obviously, I just haven't plugged one in. Oops. There you go. And upload is like, share it online, basically. I think you have six slots for photos on in your online page. Let me just have a quick look. You can also save them to the album and then you can do other things with them if you want. Uh, I want this one. The menus are a little confusing to navigate, but I'm getting a, uh, getting the hang of it, sort of. Yeah, you have six slots you can see here. Um, and you can keep, like, you can replace photos here with new ones you've taken if you want, and you still have them in your album locally, it's just... This is the amount you get to share, basically. Uh, yeah, so... That's about all I've got, I've got to say for the time being, but... Yeah, this is new Pokemon Snap. Uh, it looks nicer... Oh! Yeah, I know. Uh, it looks nicer than the first one. Uh, you've got a few more options. The controls are, are a lot better. You can use, you know, one of these. You've got two analog sticks. You've got motion control, all that sort of thing. Uh, it's easier to share your photos when you take cute photos. Um... Basically, because of the way the original game worked, this is, like, just improved by being on the Switch on a modern platform. And not only that, it's got more gameplay, it's got more re replayability and stuff like that, so... <sighs> yeah, I would highly recommend this if you would all like seeing Pokémon, basically. Because <laughs> they're just everywhere and they're super cute. And you can take all these great pictures of them and see them being adorable. And it's just a really nice experience, and I think it's fun to play, like, with friends on the couch as well. It doesn't really have a multiplayer mode or anything, but it's nice to, like, hang out together and watch out for Pokemon as you're going down the routes, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I like this game. Um, and if you would enjoy seeing some Pokemon doing cute and silly things, then you will probably also like this game. That's about all I have to say about it, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye! <laughs>